Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. We're here with a special episode on the Millennial Farmer map today. I wanted to correct some misinformation from one of my previous videos where I indicated that the grain leg setup looked like it was uh, not functional but rather just decorative. That is most definitely not true. And so I've started a new map here. This is a new farmer mode, new map, just to show uh, off how this functionality works. And so luckily they start us with a um, full semi here just so that we can play around with this. And so I've got the menu up here and you can see I can't actually dump right now. I have the control eye unload option, which is the force unload, but I can't just normally dump. I don't have a trigger. I can't just press I to unload like I would normally expect sitting outside of a bin. And so if we come over to this handy control panel here, I can actually load in, pick which bin set I'm gonna load into. So for example, let's pretend that this is uh, some dry corn that I wanna just put straight into a bin. I can pick the load dry silo option from the top here. So I'm gonna pick keypad one and it's gonna start up the leg and um, the lights come on. Now for this particular option, loading the dry silo, no sound plays. Um, I think that's probably a bug. Uh, but now I can come in and you can see that I have the start overloading option. And so I'm gonna dump this uh, front hopper and it's gonna go into the dry bin. And um, if I come into the menu here, you can see that I'm filling up my silos, my owned capacity silos and the bushels are increasing here with the corn that I dropped into uh, the pit here in front of the leg. Now, let's pretend that it's fall, and this is a load of wet corn that I have in the back um, section. So I'm going to come out here, and I'm waiting for the um, bin cycle, or the auger cycle to quit running here. Um, these lights are still on, indicating that this is running. And so once that's done, and it runs for about a minute, um, which is enough time to unload both hoppers of the truck. Now all of my options are back and I can say that I wanna load the wet silo. And so I'm gonna hit keypad three and this is gonna start up and you can actually hear the whine of the augers now, which is cool. And that's what it should do for the uh, other one. And then I'm gonna switch to the back hopper and dump this uh, corn out. Now both of these hoppers work um, for going in. It just happens that you know I'm picking one and the other just to show. And if we come into our menu here, you can see that the, now that I'm loading into the wet bin, it's going to the silo's other capacity. And so now I'm storing my wet corn in a different um, bin set than I am my normal uh, capacity. And so this is how they're simulating storing wet corn in one bin versus uh, dry corn in another bin. And now um, that we've got the corn in the wet bin, uh, I have to wait for this to finish running. Um, I do the one thing I do hope that they add is some kind of like master breaker type deal where I can just stop the active action. Um, I'm not sure if that's possible based on how I saw that that was scripted out in the XML file. But um, now if I bring my menu back up, you'll see that standing in here, I have a transfer wet dry option. And so this is going to turn on the corn dryer and allow me to transfer my corn from the wet tank into the dry tank through the corn dryer, i.e. I'm going to dry my corn. So if I push keypad 5, um, this is going to come on and you'll see I have an enter vehicle option. Now if I push enter vehicle over here, I'm going to jump back into my semi because the semis have a very wide vehicle enter um, area. But if I kind of stand on this side, or if I move my semi and push enter vehicle, I'm going to jump into this odd view of the world. Um, the camera is like way up in the air, but you'll notice on my controls that I have the option to start filling. And so if I push R, I'm able to now select my corn in my wet bin, hit start, and then um, jump back out of this. And you can hear the corn is running. You can see it's going into the dryer and that I've got, you know, dust coming out of the dryer, steam coming out of the dryer. And you can see the bushels in the silo here from the other silo capacity, my wet bin, going down, drying the corn and putting it into the dry 
uh, bin capacity. And so this is really awesome um, way to handle this using the base game mechanics. And now all of my corn is dry. So you can see that the dryers no longer got steam coming out of it. Um, this cycle does run for a couple of minutes. Uh, and so you can uh, empty out all of the wet corn that you've put into the bin. Uh, and so it does take a couple of minutes. I think one thing that I would like to see is maybe this take a little bit longer. Um, that went pretty fast. Uh, and so just to simulate, you know, a more realistic setup of getting the bins filled up and having to wait for it to dry for some period of time, that would be really awesome. So now the bad news. This doesn't actually work if you've got the version of the map that was released on the Giants Mod Hub. I had to actually go in and fix a um, minor bug uh, with the map to get this working. And... Um, what I'm going to do is show you how to fix that if you are playing with this early release of the map. I'm sure Mapper's Paradise, before this gets relaunched, is going to fix this issue uh, before it hits the mod hub again. Uh, and so if you don't have the map, you don't really need to worry about the second uh, part of this video. But if you do have the map and you want to be able to play with the corn drying mechanic, uh, check this out as we, you know, we're going to jump over to Windows and make a couple of quick uh, changes to the mod. All right, so here we are uh, in Windows, and I have extracted a copy of the map here uh, that I downloaded from the Giants Mod Hub. And so this is an unchanged version of the map. And I wanted to show you uh, how to update the actual map file to fix this issue if you're starting a new game. And so the problem with um, what's going on is if we open up this default items.xml and you can use whatever text editor you want, um, I recommend Notepad++. It's free and uh, extremely easy to use. The issue that we're having uh, on the map here is that if we look in here, we're gonna find all the default, this default items.xml is in the root of the, the mod and um, these are all the default uh, structures and thing placeables that are on the map. And if we look at this uh, line right here for silo 2, uh, and it's this mod where it says farm silo underscore w dot xml, this is the wet bin. Um, and then the mn one here, this is the main bin site. And you'll notice how these both have the same position and rotation. Um, and this is good. So he, the, the placeable for the... Um, grain leg setup is actually a combination of three mods. And so there's the main silo, the wet silo, and then there's a third mod that we're going to go look at here. And so we open this file first because we're going to copy this entire copy or copy. We're going to copy this entire position and rotation section. So make sure to get everything from uh, including the word position all the way through to this closing double quotes here. So if I copy this, and then we're gonna come back into our mod and we're gonna open up this default vehicles.xml. And interestingly enough, this very first vehicle, uh, not the very first vehicle. Oh uh, yes, this very first vehicle huh, in the list here, um, ID number one, you'll see is a uh, placeable in the farm silos folder for a transfer belt system. And this belt system is actually something that's invisible behind the scenes that is what um, I jumped into there in the video before um, where I, I was in the camera floating above the grain bins. And that's where I told it to start transferring the, the specific material out of the wet bin and into the um, dry bin. That's a really just a conveyor belt uh, behind the scenes. And so what you'll notice is this, this where it says component one, this is where this mod is located and its position and rotation are slightly different uh, than the mod we had before. So I'm actually going to uh, split the screen here a little bit just so that I can show you these two items. And if I scroll over, you can see this highlighted line here where I have a position and a rotation. See how that's just a little bit off of the position and rotation that you see over here? So what we're gonna do is take that bit that we copied and we're gonna highlight this area here. 
we're going to delete that so that it just says component one with this uh, backslash uh, bracket there. And we're going to paste in that value from the other file so that they match. All three of these should be the exact same. The silo one, silo two, and this uh, conveyor belt, transfer belt over here. And so once all three of these are the same, you can save this change that you made to the default vehicles.xml file and zip this back up and put it back into your mod folder. And if you create a new game, that's going to solve the problem for you. Now, if you've already started a game and you don't want to have to start a new game from scratch, but you'd still like to be able to use the grain dryer, uh, there's a fix that we can do for that that's very similar. So if I go find my saved game, and you can find your saved game by going to your, wherever your farming simulator uh, directory is. Usually you're familiar with this because your mods folder is here and this is where you're placing your mods. Um, for me, it's in my documents, my games, um, farming simulator 2019, and then in here, you got to figure out which save slot you were using. Uh, so in this case, I was uh, testing with save game 13. And uh, inside of your saved game, you're going to have all these different specific XML files. And what we're looking for is the vehicles.xml file. And so if you just double click on this to open it up, uh, I'm going to bring this up here in Notepad++, and I've still left this default items.xml open that we had open from the map file because we still need this uh, same position and rotation that we got uh, to fix the uh, default vehicles file in the map. We're now going to do the same fix to the vehicles.xml file in our save game. The only difference is, is that the belt may be in a different position inside of this file than it was in the default items file. And so we have to actually look and be somewhat careful as we scroll through this. And if you want to search for it, uh, essentially you just need to search for uh, this farm silos string and or the belt system string. It just really depends on... Um, if you've put a bunch of other mods in here, you might find something with a similar name. And so, you know, I recommend, you know, if you want to be very specific, um, you can copy uh, the file name right out of the other file. Um, but, you know, I know for a fact this is a new game that I'm testing with that, you know, finding this farm silo slash transfer slash belt system dot XML like this is um, what I, the line I'm looking for. And then I'm going to look down to the line right below it and I have the position and rotation here that aren't correct. And so I'm gonna highlight those, I'm gonna delete them, I'm gonna put the values in from the default items position and rotation here that we grabbed before, and I'm gonna save this. As soon as I save this, um, I'll be able to go in and start using the dryer in my uh, saved game. I'm sure this is something that's going to get addressed and fixed before it's released again to the Giants Mod Hub. Uh, but just in case you want to keep playing on this map now and you want to play with all of the features that uh, were intended to be there, this is an easy way to get that working in the short term. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, help you out. That's all for today. Kederk, out.